Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel, and uh, well, we're going to talk and have a little bit of videos on the um, uh, RSP devices, uh, the SDR play, SDR play RSP devices, especially using um, SDR Uno software. Um, a few pointers, a few things that you might have missed that you might want to know. Now, the first thing, this one, uh, this first video will be a simple. Um, introduction to the RSP devices and is the you know, um, just what it is actually and what are the different parts that you see on the screen here that I will show you. So first of all, uh, the uh, RSP devices made by SDR Play, RSP1A, RSP-DX, RSP Duo are software defined receivers. A lot of people have a hard time understanding what they are. They are radios. They are radios that you actually buy and install with an antenna at your location. Uh, too many people are under the impression that you need internet for an SDR to work. There are online SDRs that you can access, yes, but a SDR is a radio, it's autonomous, and you can have it working on any device, no need of any internet. This will work as long as the software is installed on its own. It is a radio, it's just that the knobs and the controls are the computer. So that's why it looks like a little black box. All the controls are made by the computer. The um, nice part of an SDR and uh, any SDR play devices is the fact that they actually show you a lot of things that you can see on the uh, waterfall. This is what's fun actually. A lot of people, and I've seen people actually say, well, you know, if I scan the bands, it's the same thing. I don't need an SDR for that. You don't understand what an SDR do does when you say that because it's very simple. An SDR shows you in real time everything that's happening. You will miss out on signals if you use a standard radio. Um, and that has been true for me so many times that I actually found some signals because they just appeared... Like, for example, these two lines here, this line here uh, and this line here, which is interference, basically, it seems like, just popped up. And uh, I just noticed they popped up, and there's another one here. So, you know, this is something that you would not see, you would not know they actually appeared and they are there, unless you tune and you actually fall on them. Um, so the waterfall at the bottom gives you, in real time, what's happening with a signal you might be listening to. For example, here it's tuned to 9395, but you could see on each side. And depending on the device you use, what you see is could be bigger or smaller than this. I like to have a, a pretty good um, spectrum in general because this gives me access to and see as much as spectrum as possible on a big screen. This, of course, is dependent on your screen. Some people say, well, I don't need that big. Yeah, if you have a laptop, you know, just with 13, 14, 15-inch screen, you don't want to have a big um, waterfall, a big bandwidth, because, yeah, it's kind of small to see. But on a big screen, like right now, I'm using a 55-inch TV, you want to have a lot of that spectrum because you can see in detail a lot more. So you have the spectrum, you have the station, you see these lines, which are other stations or interference or whatever other signals that the device is actually getting. Here on the top, you have what is the general uh, noise floor, and the peaks are the stations that are received that are better or received above the noise floor. These are very interesting lines that I'm seeing here. I don't know what is happening actually with uh, some thing making interference around me. Uh, and, of course, you'll have the audio. This is an audio spectrum. This tells you the audio. So everything that has to do with the, the, the audio of what you're listening to is going to be visible here. And, of course, you have audio filters. You have audio bandwidths that you can change to make uh, the, uh, the signal you know, bigger, smaller, and so on, and, and have more richness in the audio uh, spectrum. Of course, the main panel with all the modes, USB, LSB, and so on, the frequency, here on the right side is the noise uh, reduction features and all the AGC, um, the, the speed of the AGC that you can play with and so many other functionalities. The main panel on the left side, which is the on-off switch if you want with the, the start-stop, 
RF gain and so on. So it's very complete. And this is just scratching the surface because in the menus, there's sub menus and there's so many things you can tweak and play around with. So that's pretty much the basics and the 101 of what it's all about. RSP devices that use SDR Uno, as a, that is actually the software made by them. Uh, one of the uh, uh, nice things about RSP devices is they are wideband. So if you're looking for something that covers not just medium wave, long wave, short wave, and so on, you want to have VHF, UHF capability, these devices are wideband, go up to 2,000 megahertz or 2 gigahertz. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.